Tonight and talking a little hoops here in Pittsburgh, and it's a, it's a hot topic. The Pitt Panthers are playing incredibly well uh, in the month of February, now into March. Uh, uh, just from a, a broad perspective, talk about the job that Jeff Cable's done turning this program around the last two seasons. Well, I've known Jeff since he was a player at Duke and uh, and knew his dad and know his brother. Uh, he's a remarkable coach and leader. So I'm a, I've always been a huge fan of Jeff. So, I mean, you, you, you'll probably remember this. I mean, he was one of the youngest coaches, head coaches in the country when he was at VCU. And really, it was Jeff. I mean, Shaka Smart put the cherry on top, but it was Jeff that really started that program in the Final Four direction. Uh, I think he's done a fabulous job at, at Pitt. And, you know, your folks know this because you're in that area, but, you know, the Pitt job changed when uh, the Big East broke up and they went into the ACC. It's a, it's a substantially different job. And building equity in a new league is not easy to do, and I think Jeff's done a, a really good job of, of doing just that. You know, Jay, it was, it was – you know, rough tread for for Jeff early in his career or tenure here at Pitt. Rather, uh, had some rough seasons, had some departures. Guys that are frankly still playing four or five, six years later. Um, but it was it's the ACC, so you thought hey, if we're able to crack the middle of the pack, we're, we're back to being relevant again. Not so much this year or even last year. What do you think has led to kind of this notion that the ACC isn't as good as it used to be? Can you can you identify some threads that may you know, shed some light on that? Yeah, I, I think it's primarily because some of the brand names of the league, uh, Louisville, Florida State, um, even though Syracuse had a good year this year, uh, Notre Dame this year, the, some of the brand names have not been quite as good as uh, as you expect. And, you know, when you have a market like Louisville and a team, that that's kind of dragging uh, the league down a little bit. So what, what tends to happen in a league like the ACC this year anyway is when you have that happen and the teams don't do as well from the start to the middle of the season, you know, Notre Dame's gotten significantly better. They're a tougher out than they were earlier in the season. But when you look at the, the, uh, the numbers, if you wind up beating them, it doesn't really help you. And if you lose to them, it really hurts you, even though they've gotten substantially better. So you know, one of the problems I think we have in basketball is we're unable, we're unable or unwilling or both to put a value on the game at the time it's played. Like it kind of drives me crazy when you beat a team early in the season and they're, they're not, not all that good early in the season. And they put things together when people say, boy, that win really looks good now. You know, at the time it didn't look so good because the team wasn't that good. And then later on they get substantially better. Or you have a, a team like Virginia this year, which – you know, Virginia has put themselves in a little bit of a position where it could be a shaky selection Sunday. Their, their overall record is NCAA tournament quality, but their play in the last month or so has not been. So you have, you have factors like that where, uh, where it tends to skew some of the numbers. So when, like the Big 12, as you know, is uh, probably the best top to bottom of any conference. They don't really have anybody. Oklahoma state's not great, but they don't have a whole lot of teams dragging down the overall numbers of the league. And when you have that, you know, sort of soft bottom uh, of a league, it really tends to affect the top teams as well. And I don't remember how many teams the ACC got in last year, but the, the teams that got in the tournament killed it. They did really well. Um, so, you know, yeah, I, I think sometimes, you know, the number of teams that get in the tournament and the way we couch all that stuff, uh, you know, right now the ACC perception wise is not as good, but you watch these teams play and you go, man, you know, uh, uh, Pittsburgh's a tournament team. They are. And last year it was Clemson, like Clemson was a tournament team last year. And I thought it was uh, really unfortunate that the committee didn't, didn't see that. Talking to Jay, Jay Billis, ESPN college basketball analyst and, when you, when you revert back to Pitt, you look at a team, they obviously have to beat NC State, who's a capable team uh, at home at the Peterson Event Center on Saturday night, 745. Got to beat them. You get to 21-10. and 10, They would be 11-3 and three in their last 14 games. They're seven, they've won seven games on the road, including wins at Duke and Virginia. Do you still think, with that being the case, they're two wins in the ACC tournament away from, from being potentially in the tournament? If they oh if they were to beat NC State and win two games in the tournament I don't I think it would be a no brainer I mean I think I, I you know look who knows what's going to happen right. with some of the other teams that are are near the line 
and there are a lot of teams that are near the line. Um, I don't think it's a set, it's a done deal for a number of teams that people seem to think are, you know, last four in or, you know, first four, all that, all that stuff. Um, that's if it ends today and it doesn't end today. I mean, the, the best recommendation is just stick with the process and win the game in front of you and then, then move on. But, you know, when you look at, uh, I, look, I watch all these teams. I can't sit and tell you I've put my own list together, the top 100 teams, like I'm a committee member. But, uh, but Pittsburgh would be firmly in the field for me. Um, it's a, it, it, I think Jeff's team is really talented. They can really shoot it. Uh, they're difficult to play against. And when you look at their schedule and how they've played against it, I mean, honestly, aside from uh, the loss to, to Missouri, which I think was in November, mm-hmm. um, they don't have any bad losses on the schedule. And a lot of more away losses, things like that. And show me who's killing it away from home, aside from, you know, the number one seeds and sort of the top two seed lines. It's really not that many teams. There's a lot of really good teams out there that, uh, you know, I, that I see that people say, oh, this team's firmly in the field. They haven't won the quality of games that uh, the Pittsburgh's won. And, uh, you know, the, the win at Duke is going to, I think, be really helpful to, to Pitt's case down the road.